show you how to make a rag quilt. Many people do it different ways. I've done only one, so this is the way that I do it. Um, there's many Facebook groups and YouTube channels that can show you how they do it, but this is how I do it. So let's begin. I first started with scraps. I took old jeans and cut them into squares. Uh, these are five inches by five inches. I took cotton fabric, jeans that I had uh, from my husband. <laughs> and then I also had a lady donate a whole bunch of old jeans. So I took them apart as well as flannel shirts that had holes in them and flannel fabric. And there's different kinds of jeans, so it gives you different colors. Now, some people like to put everything in a nice pile and then make a pattern. But me, no, we're gonna do just random. So I put my random colors in a stack and we are going to sew them. Now I did already start this, but I wanted to show you that this, that doing a rag quilt is different from a regular quilt. Like I said, there's other ways of doing it, but this is the way that I do it. You have to sew the two pieces with the seams up. And I use a half inch seam allowance. And the seam allowance is just the space between the thread and the edge of the fabric. I am using cotton thread, uh, Coates and Clark, and I have my pile here. So I'm going to be um, sewing these together two by two, and then I will have 12 squares in a row. And then I'm not sure how many rows I'm going to end up with. I'm guessing about 14 but once I get to 12 I will see how long it is because this is for my husband so he's pretty tall let's begin when I begin sewing I go down about a half an inch down or maybe a quarter inch you know and then I sew all the way down until about a quarter inch or a half inch before the end one thing to note for the, for the ones that are fractionally challenged, like me, um, a half inch seam allowance is four eighths, which is the tick mark before the five eight. I know it's funny, but I didn't know this when I started sewing a year ago. When you start sewing um, a whole bunch of squares together and they're all connected by one piece of thread or two pieces actually this is called a daisy chain i also back tack at the end once you get a whole bunch of squares that are put together like this um, then you're gonna cut the strings in the middle and then put them together and to make a row of 12. Okay, so once you get a whole bunch of rows done, you're going to get your Wonder Clips. I use Wonder Clips. Um, this is actually the off brand, but I'll put a link in the description of where I got these. I actually found them much cheaper than a lot of places. Um, so I can't really do this with one hand, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your row and you're going to clip it, but you're gonna clip and nestle each seam. And I do one on each side, so let me do it real quick so I can show you. Okay, see how I have each clip? They are, they are, well that might not be a good, good one to show you, but anyway, basically you splay these out. 
do this with one hand, but you splay them out and you nestle the seams together. And then I put one clip on each side. And after all of them are done, there's another one. I did them all for each one. You should have about 24 or more clips on this row. And you're going to sew a half inch seam allowance all the way down to get to the end. And you're going to do that with all of your rows that you have. So take your time and get it done. Okay, so um, once you get as many rows as you want, the next step will be cutting. Now, I won't really explain the cutting part that will be in the second video, um, but um, just to put a spiel, get these the, um, scissors. They're from Fiskars, and I can put a link in the description below, but basically you're gonna cut all of your seams making sure you don't cut the thread but anyway look forward to the second video i'm going to show you what to do after you cut because you have to wash it and you cannot wash it in your regular machine so uh, stay tuned for that thank you for watching